What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I am Pete. And we're going to do a little bit of a speed run for you guys. So, Pete, kick it off. All right. Uh, Green Arrow, Black Canary, number 15, new team. Uh, great. New uh, writing and artist team. Yes, thank you. Still Green Arrow, Black Canary. <laughs> Thank, thanks, buddy. Uh, anyways, uh, I just feel that uh, really got back to the core of why this comic was great. You should pick it back up. It's very enjoyable. I know the speed worst issue of the week. I'm gonna say I know the speed I'm not supposed to comment on other people's uh, reviews, but that was a terrible comic. Only recap, not worth reading. Final Crisis Revelations number four hundred five. Um, this book I'm liking. I'm liking Greg. No, Rickman's it sucks. Part. It blows. You don't, don't even pick this comic up. Don't even, don't even, even know. It. Why would you bother? This is. I didn't interrupt you. Uh, the right, very, very gritty, very gritty work. Phil Pan's art's fantastic, um, and it finally does flesh out some of the backstory of Final Crisis, which is important because it's confusing. X Men Spider Man number two by Christos Gage. Uh, really enjoyable book. Really like the first issue. Really like the second issue. This is uh, showing X Men and Spider Man interacting in different decades throughout their careers, but it's actually following a plot line that I'm not going to spoil for you, but I think it's leading to something major. For the Marvel Universe that actually, and more specifically for Spider-Man, this could be really cool and really interesting, so keep picking it up. And the art's great. No. You guys didn't think it was touching moment with that arrow coming through the air? I thought, I thought that it was, was awful. And really? I thought that was awful. impossible to have. Like, she can't do that. It was, it's the not whole thing was so tortured and poorly written yeah. and insulting. The whole thing about HIV was yeah. grating and made me uncomfortable. There was yeah. nothing about HIV. In yes, there was. Yes, there was. It. It's weird. It's totally weird. It's like a joke. A weird joke. What? Carry on. Don't read it right now. <laughs> Mirror's Edge. <laughs> All right. Mirror's <laughs> Edge. is rolling. Number two. Um, I know it's kind of lame to like uh, because it's uh, going to be a video game or is a video game. But the, the writing of the artwork is very enjoyable in this. I'm into it. I like the characters. I like where they're going. Uh, it's very interesting the way it's set up. Uh, JLA number 27, um, this bring back the old Milestone Heroes, um, which I was never uh, really into. It's about halfway through. Uh, but um, this has been the best issue that McDuffie's done in a while. It was nice to see him kind of back on his game and really uh, liking the characters and their choices. Um, so, yeah, worth picking up if you gave up on the title. Crossed number two, uh, not quite as crazy go nuts as the first issue, but there's still some totally gross stuff in here. Yeah. So if you like totally gross pseudo zombie stories, this is definitely for you. The, many fucked up things happen. Yeah. Pete, we're back to you. I killed giants number six yeah, and you're seven. Up to the scene. It's right there, buddy. Uh, unbelievable. This, this, the art is fantastic. The storytelling is just phenomenal. I can't say enough about Joe Kelly what he's doing here. Great indie comic. Really, you should check it out. It's fantastic. This panel, bro. Okay. literally. The hilarious thing is, you didn't even care about that review. You're like, I gotta, yeah, I gotta, you gotta see. do some research. No, I, it's amazing. I really do. But I, you threw me for a loop here. I didn't even catch Just read soul. that panel. Uh, Astonishing X Men Ghost Boxes. This series is a waste of money, as we talked about. Um, there's only like uh, 15, 16 issues of story. And the story Thank is. Very at pages of story, sorry. <laughs> There's only like... <laughs> the content is huge! It's crazy. There are only like 15 pages of story in this comic, uh, and it's so bleak and terrible. It's an interesting idea, and I feel so sad that this is the way they've chosen to this, go about it. This uh, makes me... I was okay with uh, Errol Ellis's Astonishing X-Men run. Yeah. This makes me hate it. Yeah, and I just this hope... actively makes me hate this it. This is such a ridiculous choice to do this. Like, oh, it makes why, no sense. Why do we keep retelling the classic story from an Astonishing X-Men 26? It's yeah, it's stupid. Terrible. Uh, and terrible. also, I want to add one more thing. Again, this is not turning into much of a speed round, but Warren Ellis said this thing online where he was like, don't blame me, I don't make up the three ninety nine price point. Yeah, but you knew you only wrote 15 pages of story. And they don't even give you any indication of where it's going. These these are basically four shorts that have been thrown in this book that have no bearing on anything. Yeah, that's why I didn't pick it up, because the last one was a ripoff. I almost didn't, but I was like, i got to give another chance. It's why? bleak and terrible. Why? Well, well I'll you tell you this? what's not a ripoff is Secret Six, number four. Uh, I've been a little critical of Gail Simone on Wonder Woman. She is doing such a kick-ass job of this title. It's so fun. It's it so is. funny it's and so fun. enjoyable. Is. This is a must-pick-up title. It's great, original, and unique. What did you think of that panel? All right, so the HIV thing was a little weird and out of nowhere, but uh, I, I guess I didn't catch it the first time because it didn't really... Because uh, you only read every other page in your comic. No, I just... I didn't. I thought she was just making a condom joke about, like, talking to your parents about sex, and that was awkward. 
I reread it and it's, Connor's making nervous. It no, it's like I just feel like it was. He a use we, it was. A, it wasn't that. It's a weird thing to drop like that, which I didn't think. Would, I don't know why they went for a joke like that. It's a little upsetting, but overall the comic is good. Screw you guys. Nope. Here we go. Damn. Same sex though, right, guys? Yeah, that's very key. Not me neither. I don't know. Either way. Neither. Uh, neither. DMZ number 37, one of four. Plant your seat. Really great place to jump on. Uh, fantastic. Uh, they're really not getting out of the park with DMZ. I don't know why you're not reading it. Why aren't you reading it? <laughs> get, get in their face. That was, that was 10 people being like, oh, Yeah, don't. Yeah, yell at me, Pete. Like, you're always yelling at me, Pete. First, it's condoms. <laughs> Green Lantern Core number 31. Um, this is like the gritty Green Lantern. All these terrible things happen, uh, the, but it's really, it's well written, and the art is different, but a little confusing, but I like it, um, even so. Um, worth picking up. Pick it up. Uh, Nightwing 151 and Batman Detective well, Comics number eight. Wait, you can't do two comics in one review. You're absolutely right. That's because, Pete, they are the same comic book. Yeah. Uh, if you like stories about Nightwing and Two-Face and that are both terrible and boring and have nothing to do with Batman or Last Rites, you're going to love these. I don't know what they're doing with Batman right Sneaky now. Sneaky Salvin. Because, Sneaky. no, here's the thing. Before you go, uh, we're going with your review. The way they do this is Denny, this is the first of the Denny O'Neill thing that they've been right. promoting. And it happens here and it's continued back into Batman, but not next issue, it's the issue after. So we're going to have to wait like a month and a half uh, to get uh, it. Also, the writing is terrible. Yeah. It. The art is great. The art is great and it's very different than Batman. I'm Detective Comics. I'm Detective. Not Nightwing, yeah. which is just... Rah. Nightwing. Yeah, it's toilet water. Toilet. Okay, so a lot of people are commenting, hey, Wolverine does a lot of one-shots right now. It's he doesn't Wolverine. write them. He doesn't write them. He, he, does, he writes them. all his own material. <laughs> it's he all, does all his own stunts. Exactly. Yeah, he does all his own stunts and his artwork. Yeah. He's uh, got an adamantium brain. That's what they say. Uh, well, people say it's getting a little ridiculous, and I hear you, and I agree. But this makes it all worth it. This is my favorite so far. Wolverine flies to the spider. Ah, <laughs> this is oh, so classic Wolverine. This just great stuff. Um, just awesome. So backstory for you guys: Pete is a millionaire, and he pays Marvel to come out with one of these every week. I wish. He's just I'd do funneling. it. If I could. He's just funneling money to the would, Marvel. I would if I could. So he's got Joe Q's ear. Yeah. There's a one shot coming out next week called Wolverine and the Harry uh, Drunk Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the right. Harry Drunk Guy sits on Wolverine's shoulder and they fight crime. And yeah, they're pretty good. Harry, he keeps saying snicked. Uh, Invincible number 56. Uh, this is a great issue, finally, from Invincible. It's nice to see that it's... Uh, it's not finally. It's been getting good in the last couple of issues. But this one, as an issue, it really crystallized everything that's happening. It's nice. They're setting up a lot of things. It's back to what it was in the beginning, I think. Definitely pick it up. Last but not least is Courtney Crumrin and the Prince of Nowhere by Ted Nafee. I love this series. Uh, I think I've talked about it on the show before. Uh, there's a couple of uh, trades that you could pick up. They've been releasing this in this large-scale format, one-shots, lately. Uh, this is good. This is not, uh, honestly, quite as strong as the other ones in the series, but it's still better than 95% of the things out there. The art is great. The writing is great. Uh, this is good for all ages. If you like... Roll Doll, or um, I don't know, any sort of dark children's stories. The Courtney Crumb in the series is definitely for you. Mm. And that's it. If you have a question, you can write us at thecomicbookclub at yahoo.com. You can comment below, subscribe, tell your friends, check out our blog at popcultureshock.com slash cbclub. And uh, please comment below and let us know uh, what Pete should title the next Wolverine one shot because he's <laughs> going to be emailing Joe Q any day now. Yeah, and then Wolverine will come into the office and be like, I want to call it Wolverine in the beer. It's tough <laughs> because they don't let you smoke in the Marvel office, so Wolverine kind of has a problem with that. <laughs> or if you're ever in New York City on Thank Tuesday, you. check us out, 8 o'clock. It's a live show, it's a lot of fun. That's a dream of yours. A dream. Someday. What, to share an office with Wolverine? Yeah, it would be great if you shared share an office. He's got to speed up with and a Wolverine cigar. Would be like, hey, did you, uh, did you watch Lost last night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wolverine. Wolverine. It's it's great Wolverine. Wolverine. Great, great episode. episode. What about Top Chef? How would they... Yeah. <laughs> what a quick fire challenge, huh? How would they ever make that? Yeah. Then, that guy, Jose, he's the best there is at what he does. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs>